All right, buckle up, because today we are diving into the world of AI Dungeon Masters. Really digging deep into this one. We are. You know, I love when my inbox is full of of your latest finds. Well, get ready because this one's a doozy. You've been digging into Lit RPG Adventures, this project by a guy named Paul Bello. Yeah. And honestly, after going through your stack of articles and forum finds, I am hooked. What I find fascinating is how far back this goes, right? You sent me stuff from like 2020. Oh yeah. Back when GPT-2 was like the new hotness. Which in AI years, 2020, that's like ancient history. It is to go from that to what he's building Let's now. Tell. Talk about a journey. What was it, though, back then? Was there something in one of those early articles or forum posts that made you go, okay, this Paul Bella guy, I need to keep an eye on him? It's funny because what hooked me was actually, like, the simplicity of it. Okay. He was focused on solving a problem that every dungeon master faces, which is those character backstories. Yeah. You've got to have them. They're essential, but they can be so tedious to come up with. Yeah, yeah. He starts there, simple, elegant solutions using GPT-2, and that was cool. Right. But then you see the progression, and he just keeps adding more and more and more to his toolkit. So it's not just backstories anymore. Oh, no, no, no. This is way beyond. It's going to be the rundown. So now he's got, what, like three dozen different generators on his site? Three dozen. At least they're talking. Okay, now we're way beyond backstories. Oh, yeah. What kind of stuff is he generating these days? Taverns with like quirky proprietors and detailed descriptions of the atmosphere, magic shops with bizarre wares and like weird magical effects. He's even got a Shadowrun character generator on. Hold up, now we're mixing genres. Right. Shadowrun. So we got spaceships <laughs> and fantasy. It's all in there. I'm picturing a dragon fighting a cybernetic ogre in my head right now. <laughs> this is great. Right. He's not afraid to branch out. But the heart of it, the thing that you clearly latched onto in your research, is this upcoming unified world builder he's working on. Okay. That's where things get really, really interesting. Now you've got my attention. You mentioned that you even got your hands on some of his devlogs. I did. What's got you so excited? What's under the hood of this thing? So... You mark this one passage in a recent entry that I think perfectly captures it. He's not just placing buildings randomly on a map. He's using this algorithm called Wave Function Collapse to design his cities. Okay, Wave Function Collapse. I'll be honest, I had to look that one up. It's a little technical. It is. So remind me, what makes this so special? It's all about organic city design. Okay. So instead of that grid-like cookie cutter feel you get with a lot of procedurally generated cities, wave function collapse, it creates cities that feel like they grew naturally over time. Got it. Like a real city. Right. Not just something that was spit out by a computer program. And he actually shared a comparison on the forum. Oh, wow. The difference is incredible. You see like the wave function collapse city and it's just got this flow. It yeah. feels real. Oh, I can imagine. That <laughs> makes such a big difference in how immersive a game world feels. It's huge. You know, it's one of those things you might not even consciously notice it. Totally. But it just works. Exactly. Okay, so wave function collapse for cities. Yeah. What else has he packed into this world builder? He's gone full AI integration with this one. I'm talking like entire kingdoms, each with a unique history, ruling dynasties, ongoing conflicts. Right. He even mentioned the AI invented this whole trade war between two kingdoms over, get this, glowing lichen oh, like. that's used in magic inks, apparently. Okay, glowing lichen trade wars. Yeah. This is some serious world-building detail. It's like he's created an AI historian crossed with a fantasy novelist. That's a great way to put it. But you also mentioned some conundrums he's facing. What's tripping him up? Right. So as smart as these AI tools are, they still struggle with certain nuances. Yeah. You highlighted this one forum thread where he talks about AI's difficulties with mountain ranges. And it's a great example. What, like you can't figure out how to draw a mountain? No, not quite. Okay. It's more that the AI doesn't always understand the implications of a mountain range. Like it'll draw them on a map, no problem. Mm, yeah. But then it might place cities on either side that have like no problem trading with each other or yeah. even like having shared cultural elements. And it's right. like, hello, mountain. It's like the AI thinks the mountain range is just a line on a map. Exactly. Not this like huge geographical barrier that impacts like everything. Right. And that's what Paul's trying to solve. He wants the AI to understand that if a kingdom is split by a mountain range, there should be some realistic consequences that are reflected in its history, its culture, its economics, everything. So it's like he's teaching the AI to be a better dungeon master. Exactly. Able to handle those curveball scenarios and make them feel like a believable part of the world. 
Precisely. Wow. And what's really cool is how open he's being about this whole process. Oh, yeah. He could have easily kept these challenges under wraps. Sure. But he's out there in the forums sharing his struggles, asking for feedback. It's refreshing. It really is. It's like he's turned debugging into like a community event. Totally. Which I love. I'm looking at this one forum post that you flagged where he's talking about the AI generating ridiculously long timelines for these kingdoms, mm -hmm. like thousands of years of history. And I guess he had set some parameter for like a much shorter world history. Yeah, he gave it like a strict like, hey, keep it within a few centuries. And the AI was like, nah, I'm going to do millennia. I'm going to go big or go home. Right, exactly. It's like he gave the AI a box of crayons mm -hmm. and it decided to color the entire neighborhood. That's a great analogy. But, you know, that's part of what makes this whole project so compelling. Totally. It's that he's not afraid to show, like, the messy side of AI development. The sausage making, so to speak. Exactly. The unexpected bumps in the road, and the community just eats it up. They do. And it makes them relatable, you know? Oh, absolutely. It's like, yeah, even the guy building the AI dungeon master, even he has to, like, wrangle with the AI sometimes. We've all been there. Right. But when you look at all of these forum posts, yeah. the devlogs, they paint this really interesting picture. They do. Of a guy yeah. who is deeply, deeply passionate about this project. Absolutely. And you can see it in everything he does. And more importantly, you can see how people respond to him. Right. Like you can feel that energy. Yeah. It's infectious. You see it in the way that people respond to him. They offer suggestions. They help him troubleshoot problems. Like he's created this real sense of community around lit RPG adventures. That's so cool. It is. And I think that's kind of rare, honestly, especially these days yeah. where it feels like everything's so transactional online. This feels different. Yeah. People feel invested in his success. And honestly, I think part of that is because he's been so open about you know, even the challenges. Right. Which brings us to something that you highlighted in your notes. Yeah. Which is the financial side of things. It sounds like it hasn't exactly been easy for him. No, he's been very upfront in the devlogs about, you know, the costs of all this. Yeah. Running these AI models, it's not cheap. It's not. Especially at the scale that he's doing it. Plus maintaining the website. And, you know, time is money. Of course. He's put in countless hours on this thing. He's mentioned needing to find a way to make the project financially sustainable, especially if he wants to keep adding features, keep expanding its capabilities. Which, I mean, who wouldn't, right? This is like, he's created something really special. He has. So before we get to that, because I do want to make sure our listeners know how they can help support this project. Yes. Let's talk about the so what factor here. Okay. Because, I mean, I am all for AI making D&D &D more fun. Sure. But... You're saying that this has implications beyond, like, just rolling dice and slaying goblins. This is about way more than D&D. Okay. Way more. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Remember that article you sent over? I've read so many. Refresh my memory. Okay. It was the one where they compared what Paul's doing to, like, the early days of video game development. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's the kind of potential we're talking about here. Okay. It's so it's not just about the Dungeons and Dragons, it's about the tools themselves. Exactly. Okay. Think about the broader applications here. What if fantasy authors could use this to brainstorm entire worlds for their books? Oh, wow. Right. Instead of spending months outlining plot points, they could feed the AI some prompts and boom, get a fully realized kingdom complete with its own history, conflicts, even like quirky details like... Remember that glowing Lincoln trade war? All about the glowing Lincoln trade war. That's the kind of stuff that AI just comes up with. Now, you mentioned it. I do remember seeing a comment on one of those forum threads. Yeah. Where someone was saying that they used Paul's Tavern Generator. Oh, nice. To come up with a setting for a short story they were writing. Awesome. And apparently it even helped them break through a case of writer's block. There you go. And it's not just writers. What about video game developers? Oh, okay. Imagine being able to prototype levels in a fraction of the time it currently takes. Oh, yeah. Or generating entire quest lines with the click of a button. The possibilities, they're kind of mind-blowing when you start to think about it. Okay, so you've officially expanded my horizons on this one. I aim to please. Because I went from, like, okay, this is cool, AI Dungeons & Dragons. Sure. But now it's like, wait, the applications of this are so much bigger? They are. But I have to ask, with all this talk about, like, AI doing the heavy lifting, yeah, what happens to the role of the human creator? Right. Are we all just going to become passive consumers 
of AI generated content? That's the big question, right? Mm -hmm. And it's something that, you know, a lot of people are grappling with right now. And it's something that you were clearly thinking about based on your notes. Yeah, for sure. But here's the thing. Look at what Paul's built. Okay. It's a collaborative process. Okay. Yes, the AI is generating the raw material, but it's the human user who's providing the prompts. Right. Who's shaping the output. Yeah. And ultimately deciding how to use it. So it's more like a partnership than a takeover. Exactly. Okay. It's about empowering creators with new tools, not replacing them. I like that. And I think Paul himself actually said it best in one of his devlogs. Oh, yeah. He said he sees this as a way to augment human creativity, not automate it away entirely. I love that. Me too. And it gets back to something we were talking about earlier, like that community aspect of it all. Because mm. it's not just about Paul, like off in his digital dungeon, like building this thing in isolation. Right. It's about him fostering a space where people can come together. Yes. Experiment. Yes. Push the boundaries of what's possible. Love it. I love it. With AI. Couldn't set it better right. myself. Yeah. So this brings us to like the big question. Oh, what's next? What's next for Paul and Lit RPG Adventures? So where does this digital dungeon master go from here? What's on the horizon for Paul and Lit RPG Adventures? Well, if his latest devlog is any indication, things are about to get even more ambitious. Oh. He's hinted at incorporating dynamic events that change the world based on player choices. Hold on. You're saying he's going to make the world react in real time to whatever the players do? That's the goal. Wow. He's talking about a world that literally evolves as you play with your decisions having real consequences. Okay. Remember that kingdom with the glowing lichen trade war? Of course. It's iconic. Imagine the players, right, getting caught in the middle of that conflict. Okay. And their actions could actually, like tip the balance of power one way or the other. It's really wild stuff. So we've gone from AI generated backstories to like entire evolving worlds shaped by player choices. That's the trajectory. My brain is barely keeping up. And it goes even further. He's even talked about like integrating visuals oh, using I'm... DLE3. So not just textual descriptions, but like actual images yeah. generated on the fly to match whatever the AI's created. It's pretty mind blowing. That is next level. We might need to do a whole other deep dive just to unpack that. Seriously. But it speaks to the scope of what Paul is trying to achieve here. Yeah. It's not just about making things easier for game masters. Right. It's about expanding the possibilities of storytelling itself. I love that. This whole deep dive has been like one aha moment after another. Good. But there is this one question that I keep coming back to. Okay, what's that? If a world is built entirely by AI, is it truly unique? Ah, the age-old question. Right. Or is it just like a reflection of all the books and games and code that it's been trained on? Right. And I honestly don't think there's an easy answer. Yeah. It's like that old saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Okay. You know, AI can create things that feel new and unexpected, but it's still drawing on like this vast well of human creativity that came before. So maybe it's not about creating something wholly original, but about exploring familiar ideas in new and unexpected ways. Exactly. It's like, you know, AI is taking all these ingredients that we know and love, all these tropes, all these ideas, right. and kind of remisting them into something exciting and new. I like that. That's a good way to look at it. And who knows? Maybe in that process of remixing, something truly unique will emerge. Something that, like, we couldn't have even imagined before. Now that is a thought to leave our listeners with. I like it. The potential for AI to not just mimic, but to inspire, to push us beyond the boundaries of what we think is possible. It's an exciting time. It really is. It's a little awe-inspiring and a yeah. little bit terrifying all at the same time. The best kind of progress, right? Exactly. Well, to our listener out there, if this sparked your curiosity even a little bit, we highly recommend checking out Paul's work at LitRPG Adventures. Yes, do it. Dive into those devlogs, explore the forums, maybe even try out one of his generators for yourself. Have some fun with it. Exactly. You might be surprised by what you discover. You never know. And who knows? Maybe you'll be inspired to start building some worlds of your own. Yeah. There you go. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. See you next time.